10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello and welcome once again to the Dream Team podcast. Uh, you're here with Banksy and Jay, and uh, of course this week we have a very special guest who's been voted to be our, our next guest on the show by the Mentors members, so thank you very much for your input. We, we certainly greatly appreciate that. And uh, I've got to say, I'm excited to have this guest on, on the show with us. Uh, he is the one, the only, the novel writing Gareth Lafsky, and uh, he's a bloke that that uh, I have a phenomenal amount of respect for. He's, he's always been there DT-wise for me and, and also at times personally. Um, very, very wise in his old age and uh, he's seen a few things around the traps, mate, and he's, he's seen plenty of DT action as well. So very excited to have him on. Of course, we've got Nathan Banksy Banks, my uh, regular co-host here for me to torment and torture. Um, I hope one day he doesn't turn around and I do that to me. But, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sleeping with one eye open at the moment. Banksy, good to have you back, and welcome, Gareth. How are you going? Uh, good day, Jay. Good, yeah. Good evening. Hello. <laughs> hey, Banksy. Hello, Gareth. <laughs> now, uh, Banksy, mate, I'm going to hand over uh, hand over to you with this. You've got a bit more history with, with GL than what I do, and I understand you've got a few questions for him, and, uh, mate, fire away. Let's, uh, let's actually, before we do that, I've just realized I'm jumping ahead of myself. I do need to let uh, our listeners know, today's show, tonight's show, whichever time you're listening at, we're recording at night, so... Uh, if the words are slurred, there are a few cocktails going around. But uh, it'll be a two-segment show. We've got a, a, the interview with, with Gareth first up. And uh, then we're going to jump into, in our second segment, a general discussion on, on team lists. Some good players hand-picked by the legend Gareth Lasky himself. Uh, and they're hand-picked specifically for the buys. And, of course, then we'll uh, open the floor to the three of us who just babble on, as we tend to do, as, as three DT tragics and only babble on. Um, so now that I've actually done my part of the job, Banksy, I'm going to hand over to you, mate, so you can do yours and actually ask some questions. Yeah, thank you very much, Jay. Also, just want to mention before I start interviewing Gareth that he is the man behind that lovely intro we always have at the start of the new mental, the new Dream Team podcast. And we actually listened to it. We didn't actually listen to it beforehand because that's a bit of post-production magic I do when I edit the show together. <laughs> so I'm going get, to get, get, get things started with Gareth with the question that all of us want to know. Why why mentors is mentors and where did it come from? Ah, who is this? How did you get this number? <laughs> I found it on a computer. No, Adrian joking. Buttery gave um, it to mentors, us. Yeah. Um, no, well, <laughs> butters. No, listen, DT was hard for me because because I I, I never had mates in it that played Dream Team, and and so I was pretty lost the first year I, I played, which was 2010, and and I I didn't know anyone who did Dream Team, and so my only source of info was uh, Lone Scouts page, and and not many people would really answer your questions, of, you know, and there was a handful that did, and a handful that started talking to me, and a couple of idiots let me into their like their, their leagues and everything like that and I got talking to them and, and, and we sort of formed a bit of a tight knit sort of little group and, and, and so the following year in 2011 we, we formed a Facebook group and, and I can't name it here because otherwise you'll find me with cement boots and in the bottom of a river but it, it's a pretty tight knit little group and, and um, Hang on, hang on Gareth, just backtrack <laughs> here just quickly mate, um, the favoured food group, would it happen to be spaghetti bolognese of this particular group that you're talking about? I have no idea. It's it's very little Italy, man. The way you're telling the story, it's very little Italy. You know, like you, you can't oh, talk about okay. Fight Club, the I, mob, and, and I, cement boots, mate. No, I, I have I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm wondering. I, did, I, couldn't, I couldn't say. I'm wondering if you're knocking <laughs> over uh, semi trailers full of, full of cigarettes to sell on the street corner, you know, late at night, mate. Maybe that's why you haven't been around. Yeah. Well, yeah, possibly. I mean, <laughs> what what people do in their own time is really up to them, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so, as long as I keep getting the money from it, I don't mind what they do and where they get it from. <laughs> but, but anyway, back back to my little story. 
<laughs> yes, so, so I had this group, um, well it wasn't my group, it was Frank White, he started all, it was a good idea and, and he just invited a few of his mates and and, 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 and it really, we all we all clicked and, and we all got really good at Dream Team by helping each other and, and I, I wasn't very good at Dream Team and, and this year I, because of the group and because of like the, the concept of it, I got good at it and, and it didn't take long and I thought well other people are like me and don't know Dream Team and, and don't know what to do and so um, a few of us got together and we thought well we should open this up to other people but we didn't want an influx of people into this little tight knit group so we started a new group called Mentors and the idea was basically to be like Lone Scouts page there it used to be with, and, and to help people who, who were struggling with Dream Team and, and so the few of us who thought we knew a little bit about Dream Team we thought start this group and help a few people out and that's how it started it, it's gone on from there and it's changed a bit now and there's a million groups now on Facebook that you know people can go for help and everything so you know we changed a little bit now to, to suit that, you know. Yeah. yeah, that's about it, really. Yeah, that sounds about right. From what I know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, it's a pretty good. The the, the the concept of it was to you know just help out those who didn't know play. But I mean, we all know what we're doing now. At least we all say we're not that. bad. <laughs> and and it's, yeah. it's it's funny you saying that. You know, the the whole concept being about helping people. Because some of my earliest memories of, of dialogue with you, Gareth, is you and I posting theme lists back and forth and mm. discussing the concerns. And oh, I'm not quite sure about him. What about this? You know, what if he does this or he didn't do this particularly well? You know. And, and we'd literally just talk ourselves in circles and, and almost at times into a panic. But, you know, the banter back and forth was always fantastic. And I, I never walked away from gushing like that. Worse the wear for it. You know, despite the fact the whole no. hyper-analytical, I always took something positive or something learned and new away from it that, that improved my DT. Well, that's the thing. Even if you don't take the advice and everything like that, because everyone plays different. And, and let's face it, I'm not setting the world on fire with Dream Team. But, like, even if you don't take the advice, even, even just talking about it and, and discussing it, out loud, so to speak, like it, it clears it off up in your mind rather than you're just going around in circles going A or B, A or B, A or B, like because you're getting it out and you're talking about it, that kind of thing can't do anything but help you know, you'd yeah. be a better dream team coach. Absolutely. That's definitely something I took from the group when I joined in 2011. I, as you said, I don't, I, I did have mates I, I dream team with, but I was competing against some head head leagues. So mm -hmm. I went to the secret league that they didn't know about, <laughs> but even though it was public, they didn't know about it because I'm just so awesome like that. And I talked about my <laughs> team and I went and bet them again and then I bet them last year and I'm going to beat them again this year. I'm going to rub it in their face for the fifth year in a row. Hang on, hang oh, on. I, don't know, I think, I've got, that, I think that, I've got a team in that league, mate, now, so um, I might have to try and technically it's mine <laughs> <laughs> but hang on hang on Banksy just just want to clarify some, some facts there you didn't beat Lone Scout did you what would I have to beat Lone Scout for that team overall <laughs> my shaving grace team is the team that's going to win the beat and keep me undefeated in the Hornby boys uh huh uh huh can, can I just say while we're on the topic of that I just I loathe I loathe Lisa to I just like having a frozen team I mean even though you know Lone Scout's team normally does pretty good now. It's like you're not really competing about against anyone. You just, you know, it's like you can't yeah. banter with Lone Scout. You know, yeah, in no, the old days you used to be able to. When when Lone Scout was one person, you know, you used to be able to banter with him. But yeah. that's not me. Yeah, no, it's um, I, I I'm I'm in agreement with you there because as much as I'm giving Banksy a hard time, round five this year I went up head to head against Lone Scout in uh, in the Biscuit Bowl, which is a league that I'm in mm -hmm. with uh, Benny Schneider from ben. NRL DT yep, yep. Bashes. Yep. And and, um, you know, it's, it's also, there's a whole stack of guys from the indoor center that I umpire at and play indoor cricket at and things like that. And we just, mm. he, he jammed Lone Scout in to fill some spots. And it is the only yeah. match I've lost. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, yeah. And, and it was an 871 to an 821. Like, he beat me by 50 points. And it's the only mm. one I've lost. But as a result of that loss, I'm now sitting two for one, as in two wins, one loss. And mm -hmm. in fourth on the table. Do you want to know who's in the mm. third on that table in that particular league? No, I don't. My five-year-old son. <laughs> he is three and naught. Wow. But he's going to face the lower ranked teams at their weakest. Oh, uh, look, hey, don't, 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 don't write off his team. Don't let's, write off his team. He's pumped out a couple of uh, eight. Let, let's, be, let's be a little bit honest, though. I mean, I've got a six year old son who's got a team that's doing okay, too. And, and um, yeah, he, my son's input into that team is very limited. Uh, in fact, I think all he's done is pick shield. <laughs> no, no, no. My, 
Well, I've got to say, my, my son's input is um, fairly significant. Basically, what happens is, because I, I, for those who don't know, I'm, I'm slipping from my ex and, and I've got my kids 50% of the time. So every second week, he comes and he sits on my lap in front of the computer and, and we go through and we look at the players who haven't been performing and I'll nominate sort of four players that could potentially be dropped and traded out. He'll pick two of them and then we'll go and we'll have a look at what players can be afforded, you know, by his bank balance and, and that sort of thing to bring in and replace those players. And so he doesn't know the players' names, but he knows that he can trade out that rabbit hole and bring in a cowboy or he can bring in a panther uh, or he can bring in a shark or something. And he'll say, no, I want the shark. Or I don't, want, you know. Don't, don't bring in a panther. No, no, well, I've been, <laughs> I've, I've been slowly but surely trying to convince him. Having said that, he wanted Tim Grant and uh, that started to pay off mm. in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, we're meant to be well, interviewing you, not chatting about my son's dream team and, and all that. Yeah, well, if I, if I don't get a chance, to, if I don't get a chance because, like, you know, it's pretty easy to sidetracked, especially if you've been drinking. But, like, if I don't get a, if, if I don't get a chance, like, I've got to give a shout out to the admin that run Mentors because, like, last year, I think most people who know me know that my health wasn't very good and, and I spent a lot of the year out of commission and I couldn't do half the stuff that I used to do in the group. And, and I was basically going to pack the whole thing up because I, I just couldn't do it. And the admin there, uh, you know, I, I can't, I, I won't name specific people because, like, they all did their thing, but like they they took the ball and they ran with it, and and they kept it not only going, but they they put it, you know, they nailed it, and and the group is better because of them, and it still is. I I, I don't have a lot to do with the group now in the admin side of things. I'm more of a figurehead, and I'm the one who writes the really long essays because I love that doing <laughs> that kind of thing. But um, it's mainly the 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 people behind the scenes, the admin that run it day to day to day to day, and and I just poke my head in occasionally. And go, well, hey, look how good this group, you know, but it's them that run it, and, and my God, they do a good, mad that's props. all I wanted to say. It definitely, mad, mad <laughs> props to the admin, you know, it's, I think you, you've nailed it on the head, you know, particularly this year, it's the culture of the group and, and what's happening in the group, and we, we had a discussion earlier off air about some of the amazing things that have been happening and, and the amazing sort mm. of evolution of the culture and, and, and the little sort of community that we've created and, um, or mm. specifically that you and the admins have created, but that we're all a part of, and mm. it's, 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 you know, it's beautiful, it's, it's something it's, that's, that's Really yeah, strange. it's 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 changed a great deal over the last two years, but each change has been for the better. And 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 like I said to you earlier, like with so many groups now on Facebook, there's there's no. I mean, if you stay the same, you don't get better. You know, you've got to keep looking for ways, and and we'll get things wrong, and everything's a trial period. But like you know, it's all about making it better for everyone in the group. And and you're wrong in saying that it's just the admins that have made a great culture of people in the group. I mean, everyone in that group now has been there for at least a year. You know, I mean, there's mm. one or two new people. Most of them are now old hats at mentors, and and, and they all put in. You know, yeah. God love them. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Look, there's, it's it's very rare that, you know, Banksy or I, and, and I know I'm sort of talking for you here, Banksy, but, um, you know, you and I have had this discussion a number of times. It, it, it's very rare that a day goes by that I personally, and, and I'm sure Banksy agrees with me here, you know, don't take something new or something learned or, or positive out of the page. Mm, that is definitely true for me. All right, this is my damn interview, so shut up, Jack. <laughs> sorry, <Moving mate>, forward. sorry. <laughs> I can have somebody give me a drink or, or a sock hey, or something hey, Binksy, in my mouth. Who is um, this? How'd you get my number? What? You Sorry, we're starting again? No? Yeah, go. <laughs> Sorry. All right. We mentioned 2011 was the year that you came forward as a dream team god air quote. You came fourth. Oh, That's better than that everybody else has ever probably come in Dream Team. And, and on the seventh day, the, the, the Lord except created Except for the Gareth three Ratsky. that beat me. But they weren't some mentors. <laughs> no. Oh, gosh. And they were probably New Zealanders, crazy. too. Yeah, I think they probably, oh, if they were, I would have had a car. <laughs> okay, two were New Zealanders in some lawyers. I think one was um, Matt, uh, I can't remember his last name, Matt, name but, um, yeah, or, or Ken yeah. or something, yeah. Orca, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I spoke to him a, a few times after that. He's, he's really nice. I yeah. had to go to someone. I'm glad it went to a decent bike. Yeah. All right. So you finished fourth and that's no fluke that you finished fourth what went right that year that hasn't gone right in last year and the start of this year <laughs> if you can remember that far back oh uh, look I, I remember two things from 2011, two things, well maybe three, let's say three, three things. First one would be starting the group that cannot name, okay? well not, not starting it but joining and um, and that made a big difference because there was nothing, nothing on Facebook like, nothing at all and, and I didn't do technology very well so I didn't go to bases like Sportal and that so Facebook was my technical world, that was about it and that helped a great deal because we talked non-stop about Dream. so that was a big, big 
big starting point. So that's one. Second thing I remember most about 2011 and my dream team experience was that last week. I was second or third. I think I was second in going into that last week. And I honestly was in for, with a shot. I, I was still within reach. And it was the most harrowing week of my life. It, 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 it meant so much because I, I don't know. Those who know me know like I'm not a wealthy person and I didn't have a car and I've got a young fee and everything. So a car would have just changed my life. So it was very, very important to me. Everything else aside, I, that car would have made such a big difference. So I really, I put so much into that last week and it drove me insane. Like there was so many sleepless nights. I, I, I cannot say I was relaxed <laughs> that week. <laughs> and 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 after the first day, I knew that I'd lost because like, yes, it, it didn't pan out for me. But like in a way, it was a relief because I didn't have to sweat it anymore. It was over. But like to come so close, it was it was, uh, it was a big thing. But I'm very very proud of it, you know. And there's another uh, another guy that um, I did dream team with, or Michael Chu or Chow, I believe Chow. last name. And, and we we all went down to State of Origin. So you know, and he he was in the running too and, and felt bad because uh, he, he sort of left the running two weeks out and I was still in the running. I wanted to sort of go to the end with him and, and he wished me the best and it was really sweet but you know it, it, when, you, when you live and breathe dream team like we do, I'm sure you guys do too and, and anyone who takes the time to listen to these kind of podcasts do too you know, you, uh, when it means so much to you and, and then you, you, you finally get into a position where well this is why you do it you know and, 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 and so yeah it takes up a lot of your time and and um, I I don't know if I ever want to take drink team that seriously again because like it was it was a pretty rough week. <laughs> but, um, and the third the third thing the third thing that I distinctly remember from 2011 and it will haunt me forever. I will forever remember this is, is Ashley Harris or what, what's his name Ashley Harris his name in yeah. the Titans. Right. Second or half in 2011. He he um uh, I had one trade left and I was saving it um, after all the buy rounds. I had one trade left and I I waited until his rep was over and everything like that and he was gold he was gold and I had enough money I had all the money in the world I could buy one person I could buy anyone I wanted and I bought Ashley Harrison and the week I bought him he went down he was out for season Ooh. and and he he cost me the car because I was well and truly in it and in the end I didn't lose by much but um the the couple of weeks that he was out like cost me the car and and so for the rest of my life I'm going to remember that guy <laughs> uh, absolutely oh, God. so I, I I've never bought him since, even though he's still a really good buy. <laughs> oh. So there, they're the three things I remember. But um, I tell you why in 2011 I did so well or why I think I did so well from week one I was in the top 100 and I never left the top 100 and I remember a, a guy I respect greatly and, and, and is one of the best dream team minds I know Ricky Mix70 I'm not sure of his last name but Ricky um, pretty sure he, said, he said to me it doesn't matter if you finish in the top 100 you know first week I mean you can get there from anywhere first week means nothing <coughs> and I finished in the top 100 in the first week and, and I remember him saying that and, and, and God love him like I I, I, I took it personally, even though it wasn't aimed at me personally, or it might have been, I don't know, but I, I took it very personally and I thought, right, well, my goal is to never lo lose the top 100. I'm going to stay in the top 100. And it, I just climbed from there, but like, um, I, not one week did I fall out of the top 100. And I think that's the key to Dream Team, even though people, you can come from come from the clappers and just take it by storm. If you're in the top 100 and if you can stay there, you're always in, in with a shot, aren't you? But if, you, if you're sitting in about 2,000 or 3,000, well, you might as well just enjoy yourself and enjoy the H to head to heads, you know, and enjoy the eliminator because you're not in the shot, you know. You you got you got it you got to be within reach, otherwise, you know, there's no point. But like, you know, there's more to dream team than just winning the overall. You can still get a lot out of it. Mm. So I've got to ask you a quick question then, just as sorry, Banksy, just as a, a follow-on, yeah. and and it's purely personally motivated. Right now, after six rounds, mm. my overall ranking is 309. Mm. Am I in with a shot at, mm. at the overall? No, oh, it depends how many points you're behind. Uh, about 230. Yeah, I'm, you would be, especially if you've got like if you've got a operation for the buy ring, and she'd still be in the first shot for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean that's that's well that's well within reach. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, that's well within reach, definitely. And and you'll make up ground. Like I mean, there's there's no doubt, especially if you've paired for the buys. Even, even though you get people saying that like buys this year, there's no point. There's no point. Well, th there's always a point. I mean, you, you make up big ground if 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 you put in and, and other people don't. Mm. 
that's something I can personally vouch for. I stacked my team for the buys last year, and I shot up the rankings and never looked back. Mm. That was yeah. a big thing for my my successful year. Even last year, even though I, I spent a lot of time um, offline because of my health, um, yeah, buy preparation, e- even especially in the year that I did very well. Um, it, it, it just I, I ju- jumped so many people because I had planned the buy rounds to a T. It made a big difference, and I think it still does, even though it's harder and harder every year. But um, I still think it makes a massive difference if you're an overall player. It, yeah, it, it's the most important thing you can do is plan for the buy rounds. That actually that that puts my mind at ease because I and thanks to you'd know earlier today. You know we were chatting as I was doing the school run and everything. You know stressing out about the buy rounds because when I initially <laughs> picked my team, I gave very little thought to the buy round, and I'm I'm now. Mm trading with buy round motivation make sure that I'm, I'm mm. taking 15 players in at each buy round um, mm. and, and I've thanks to Banksy's little spreadsheet too like I'm, I'm I'm definitely not the smartest bloke going around but the one way I do understand things is, is when there's lots of pretty colours involved and that's something Banksy did do with his <laughs> spreadsheet you know he made it all oh, different yeah, colour bars and, and things like that and I, I suddenly for the first time in, in three years of playing Dream Team I suddenly sort of have an okay idea of what I'm doing with the buys whereas before mm. I've had no clue and I've, I've shrugged my shoulders and oh fuck it whatever um, and and mm. now I'm sort of trading to to get that 15 players per per buy round. So yeah, I'm, I'm that's a good number. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm, good I'm number. Like, yeah. It'll pay off. Yeah. All right. So we will move on. Next, uh, 2012 was the changing of the scoring system, and you know your health wasn't the best. But what was what are your thoughts about that scoring change system, and how did it change the strategy of Dream Team? It went from stacking your hookers, stacking your second row, to basically having to have depth all over the whole squad and having your guns at every single position. Last year was um, probably the first year that it was important to have gun halves and gun bullets, uh, and I personally I don't think I did it very well, but um. It was very important, and, and that's some, something that the new scoring system changed greatly. I mean, it was a big change because, I mean, that was where you used to save money, you know, and you couldn't do it anymore. And so, like you said, you had to spread it out a bit more evenly across the board. Um, probably now, with the new scoring system, the place you can save the most money now is probably the centres, and still, to a degree, the the uh, front row forwards, uh, only because not a, there's some wonderful points coming out of there that you can get almost as many points with a lot less. Less money. I mean, now that the cheaper players are now more expensive, I mean, they're showing their worth. But I mean, if you got on them when when they were cheap, I mean, that was a great place to save money. It definitely was the best place to save the money. And it's somewhere I have succeeded, but haven't really this season. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm a bit. I mean, last year with with 2012, I mean, I I didn't do well, and yes, yeah, so there was a, a period there where I wasn't even online, and I had some friends like uh, Luke Mc, McCowan, he, he did my team for a little bit, and and Nate Davey, they they both helped me out and did my team for a little while, and um, but um, that aside, I, injuries really hurt last year too. I mean, I I spent a lot of money on some big name guns that like all all they didn't fail they they broke <laughs> and and it was just madness trying to catch up i mean i, I did all right in the end but I, yeah it was the whole season was just catching up can i can i just point out gareth and and, and banksy I, I know this one like you you've probably picked up on this too but that is absolute freaking dt dedication right there like you you laid up in a hospital bed for an extended period and you know I'm, i personally don't know i don't know if it was months or weeks or years or whatever it was but i i know it was an extended period you were pretty much incapacitated um, <laughs> in, in every sense of the word and yet you're still ensuring that your trades are made and your dream team is in in with a shot well, for the next round. I mean, I'll, that's... I'll, that's, I'll, that's, tell, that's you, I'll tell you something that I, I, I haven't told anyone outside of my immediate family is that, that I was days away from dying and and, um, and they didn't even know how I was still like able to get up and things like that. It, it was a very scary time, but like I, I wouldn't put in, you know, I wouldn't put into Dream Team as much as I do if I didn't get the, the same amount out of it. And last year, I, maybe I didn't get out of it as much as I wanted. But like the year before and this year, like, I mean, what Dream Team, you know, it's just so much fun, you know. It, it's You get to pretend to be a coach. I mean, that's what I do. I mean, I, yeah. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a stat genius. I, I don't pour over numbers and everything like that I, I get I, I mainly play by my gut but it's what I get out of it I you know I that's what it is it's fantasy football and and you know it's just nice it's like role playing it's like I am the coach of the team and and you know I I, I do little write-ups and and I'm not the only one I, I know many people hey Bancy that, that write up their team like every every week they release a press release basically of the changes <laughs> well, they've made each week 
of, of, love, you know, and, of love those things that, that occur. I know Luke McGowan's and, done it. I've seen and, a few of yours, and, man. They, they crack me out. They're awesome. That, that's the thing. You, 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 you get so much out of it. It's so much fun. If you, if you, you let go of the bullshit and you let go of the stress and, and the worry about it, I mean, you can still obsess about something without it taking over your life and ruling your life and, 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 and making you upset. You, you can still enjoy it just as much. And, and, and I get a lot out of Dream Team. It's, it's just a, a hell of a lot of fun. And I'll, I'll never give it up. I'll, I'll be but, playing it till I'm 90. Gareth, you know, you, you've just sat there and you've said you get a hell of a lot out of it. You, you know, you're able to obsess over something without it dominating your life and stressing you out and ruining your life and all that. I just want to put a little mm. asterisk on that. That is only mm -hmm. the case if you do not own Kurt Gidley. <laughs> Oh, and 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 it, even now, I mean, like everyone's sort of like, oh, I bet you you're sad you gave him up now because he scored so well last last time around. But like, oh, he's he's still taking needles and everything for his pain and everything. He 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 is glass with a capital G. I mean, he's oh. he's as bad as Owen and Campisi. <laughs> but I mean, in all honesty, and I've seen a lot of people making that comment, and I think I've made the comment in bashes. I'm not sure if I've made it in menses, but. I do not miss Kurt Gidley's 51 because no. miss getting no. rid of Gidley and missing out on that 51 and, and his scoring, I traded that for a full night's sleep. Exactly, and, and look, you, I'm stress free. You, you, you may, you may, you may have a little twinge if he starts doing eighty and ninety three weeks in a row. You might think, oh well, now what have I done? But like at, at scoring just about fifty, I mean, there's half a dozen or to a dozen players in the halfback role that can do that week in week yeah. out without the stress. Like you say, every week you just don't know. I mean, I see it written on mentors' wall all the time. Come on, get a full game or. or don't you? You know, even even with the test match, everyone Gidley finally comes onto the field, and and all I see written on the walls is "Don't you break." <laughs> you know, I mean, oh, who, I who who wants who wants that in their team? Seriously, oh, that, oh. absolutely, absolutely. Give, give this... it up, Gidley owners. Give it up. Give it up. He's, he's gonna he's gonna play State of Origin because you know he's got a seat with his name on it there, and I don't know why they keep picking him, but they do. But you know why? Why own him? Just there, yeah, piss him off. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, I'm get, I'm a hundred percent with you. But there's there's one more thing that I've taken out of of what you've just said. And I, I think, you know, and, and it's pulling it back a little bit, and I hope I'm not sort of overstepping the mark by doing this, Gareth, but, you know, you mentioned that this is the first time you've re revealed to anyone outside of, of your close family that, that you were literally days away from dying. And, you know, the medic those in the medical profession mm. around you, they, they had no idea how you didn't. And, and I, I've got to say, having listened to you talk and, and the things, you, you've hit the nail on the head. I know exactly why you didn't, mate. Without making light of the situation, you hadn't made your trades that week. And there was no <laughs> way in hell you were shuffling loose your mortal coil until your trades were in and your whole team was set and you were ready to go, mate. Look, and I tell you what, this is another reason why it was up. Like, seriously, like, I, I was in hospital a fair while, and I had people just writing to me, ringing me, talking to me, just just pulling me through and, 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 and giving, you know, redirecting me mind so I didn't just worry, you know, and yeah. it was a wonderful distraction, and, and, you know, people like, especially Erin, you know, she, she just, you know, she, oh, she just talked to me every day, you know, and, 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 and she didn't have to, you know, and, and, and so the friends you make out of it too you know it's just a yeah. wonderful thing i've so many of my real life friends now are from dream team i've i've met so many from it in real life and and i've made friends with them and i've gone out and i've got pissed with them and i've gone to the football with them and i would never have had any of that if i didn't get into dream team you know it's very it, no we don't have dropped out it's not the be all end all if you have a bad week if you had a bad year you had fun and you make great yeah. mates, and you had fun doing it. Yeah, that's right. Still try and get something out of it. You know, don't, yeah, yeah. I mean, don't give up on it for a start. No one likes a quitter. No one no one respects a quitter, so don't give up on it. But, like, even if you go on shit like I am this year, you know, and yet I'm still having the most fun I've had since I started, you know, and it's probably my worst year. But I'm, yeah. I'm loving it. Yeah, loving it. And I just, I, I need to backtrack the conversation just a little bit because, unfortunately, being that uh, for those of you out there in, in Dream Team World who don't know, um, I'm responsible for recording all this and my audio connection just dropped out while, while Banksy and, and Gareth were, were chatting away. 
So there was about 20 seconds there where, Gareth, you were telling us that, that you go out and, and you've gone out and met with people, you've gotten pissed at footy and all the rest of it, and I've missed about the next 20 seconds after that, and it's just static. So if you could recap for me, mate, um, that'd be that'd be phenomenal. And, and of course, for the, for the guys out there, we've got to, we've got to love the technical side of this. You're yeah. asking the wrong person to remember shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, you still yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. happy, I'm is, happy is, to let it go to the, wherever it went, mate. Like, I, I uh, can't remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what we were trying to say. Yeah, I, dream, I think, dream I think teams, it's beautiful, you know. But but just just in case it got missed, like I, I did give Erin a plug because she yep. she um yeah so um yeah she helped me through really rough when my health was really bad and yeah. I've so, I've seen I mean, little but things. But apart from that, that, that's the only important part of it. Yeah. <laughs> I've, look, I've 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 seen little things that Erin has said and done over over the last couple of years and that, and that sort of thing. And, and I know her and I don't always see eye to eye. And and I think I think you know my do we put it down to my youthful enthusiasm where I act first and think later <laughs> uh, might rub her the wrong way. And and I, I fully appreciate and understand that, but I, I certainly have a lot of respect for Aaron, and, and um, I, I know that at that time there were a few things he said to me you know, that, that she was keeping in regular contact with you, and you know to do that it speaks volumes for, for who she is as her as well, because you know the comments that she made to me during that time were very very sincere and, and very much all the concern and they warm for you. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Anyway, on a less serious topic. Yeah, let's let's move on for the sappy stuff, huh? <laughs> Isn't this meant to be a DT podcast? All right, Jesus. Absolutely. I hand over the interviewing microphone to Nathan Banks. And suddenly we turn into the friggin' view. Next thing you know, what's we'll wrong with that? Jumper. Jumper. All right. Around. Let's bring some light hard in this back into this. <laughs> I see that you've traded in Josh Mansour into your team, Gareth. Is that your best or worst trade this year? And why? Well, if you've seen that I've traded Mansour in, then you, you'll probably see next week that I had to trade him back out again. Now, quite possibly my worst trade because it's cost me two trades, trades and it got me 19 points, I think. That's 15. pretty bad. How many? 15, sorry. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus All right, if you're mental, a, it wasn't your worst trade, then what was? Hang on, Banks, I just want to oh. point out, you're, you're about as good at this interviewing game as Dan Hunt on the footy show, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I got the same bit marks too. Oh, that's harsh. That's that's pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to make a Dan Hunt reference. I'm only joking, Banks. So you know I love you, man. Yeah, no, me and Saul that hurt, you know. And you you know he would have he would have been a really sneaky boy. He was he was right on his money, and he had a good be and everything like that. And ah, oh, I'm heartbroken. And not only that, I'm heartbroken as a Panthers fan. Jeez, yeah, he just he just never is. stops. I mean, I mean Panthers are rubbish this year, but like he never stops. He never stops. Well, I mean he Paul he spent a lot of time on the wing didn't he Gareth oh he, yeah but I mean like 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 Gordon did last year I mean yeah he's a winger but like you know he, he comes in and he hunts for the ball and he, yeah. and he takes it up and he takes so many hit ups I mean it's like you know the rooster wingers you know they started all this like from years ago you know they, they would come in and they would do the job of the forwards and and the centers and everything yeah. like that and and that's a, that's the kind of bloke he is and he just never stops you know uh, just a great great player but I digress let's talk about well, bad bad trades okay <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Who who do I have from the start? The probably I'm trying to think of my worst one. Joel mm-hmm. Thompson was pretty bad. Joel, Joel Thompson was pretty bad. But I I mean yeah, there, there's talk of injury and everything. But I think there was a lot more going on than just he just he was never in the game from the start. That 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 guy what's his name? Low. Drew Low. Low. The Bulldogs. Yeah, yeah, he, he was pretty, yeah, he was a pretty bad boy. He he never he never took off, did he? I mean, I, I just I, I'm glad I never. I don't think I ever played him in my start in seventeen, which is good. But like, what a waste of a trade he was. Um, he's still in my team. To- by the way. To- oh, is he? Well, I yeah. mean, at least he's cheap. At least he's cheap. He's, he's, he's not cheap. Cost- and he's rotation. Well, he's, the other he's thing not is, costing you anything. The other thing is with yeah. the all the barber stuff that's that's been all over social media and that sort of thing. Today, and I I know it came out about six weeks ago and and got sort of swashed. But all the Benny Barber stuff and and for those of you who aren't sure what we're talking about, have a look at the mentors wall. We're not going to cover it in the podcast just because there's every chance we could get sued. Um, but go and have a look at the mentors <laughs> wall and, and see the rumours as, as they're pasted and, and, and the discussion that there is there about, you know, what's going on at the Dogs with Benny Barber. Um, there's every chance that, you know, very soon he may not be in blue and white and uh, he could be elsewhere, which of course opens the door for a Drury Low or, or you know, Mitch Brown or something to take that fullback. You, 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 do, you do say that, but I mean, even if Low and, yeah, even Mitch Brown, he's pretty useless. So, I mean, even if they get it's their shot, well. then they're, they're not that good. No, 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 Mitch Brown's shot, but he's horrible. <laughs> well, he's horrible. <laughs> oh, I suppose. No, I, I mean, my opinion, anyway. Oh, look, but, yeah, you know, you're, it's, yeah, it's but I mean, opinion, there's a yeah. chance. I mean, Bar- Barber's oh, yeah. either be, he, he could either be a really, really good buy very soon or a good buy. Yeah. I mean, either way, he, that was pretty clever. I, I like that. <laughs> that was very uh, clever. It was, it was, uh, uh, yeah. 
Very much a dad joke, actually. <laughs> I, I'm I'm spot on with that. Mate, I love them. I love that. them. <laughs> okay, so the the other ones that I had from the start that have been pretty ordinary. There's only two more. Uh, Tolman, yep. let's face it, that I, I wanted him to succeed so much, and I've still got him, and I'll, I'll keep him until probably until their buy, still the Bulldogs buy start. But like, pretty ordinary for the price that he was, considering how many front row forwards are cheaper and done better, and yeah. and and also more expensive and done better. He's pretty ordinary, but I'll, I'll keep him and. And um, the worst one, basically any panther that I bought, but but probably Nguama. I I had I had such big tickets on that bloke. I I had almost almost Blake Austin tickets on him, but like um he never Ooh. delivered. He he his his preseason was outstanding. He owned every game. He he would have scored forty to sixty points every single game if you did preseason. But we've all learnt the preseason he means nothing. he was run. Yeah. He, he just and and his biggest issue was he he was so keen and he tried so hard. But the problem is, like you know, he tried too hard and he just kept stuffing up. I almost swore there, but I, I won't. But um, yeah, he was ordinary, and and now he's rock bottom price, and and he's not even playing. He's just rubbish. You don't even know what to do with him. He's, he's just sit in my, yeah, he he'll just sit in my team, you know, because there's no point getting rid of him. He's so cheap, you can't even cash in on him unless you get a you know 101,000 player. You know, you get 10 grand out of him. That's not worth it. He can just sit there and do nothing. But he can rotate. All right, there's, look, there's, there's, he can uh, rotate for the fullback. Yeah, he can. But, but I, I, do, I do want to quickly mention two other trades that I made after the initial first week. And the, and the first one, everybody ribs me about, and I buy him every year, and 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 he does my head in, and I swear at him, purse at him, but I, I always buy him. Can you guess? Mitch Orbison. Ben oh. Yeah, Orbo. He's always going to be Orbo. And and if, if you hadn't defense, brought him up, Gareth, I was going to be bringing yeah. him up because there's been you know a few requests that we, we <laughs> hit you up and ask you about the Orbo trade. In in my defence, in my defence, let me just say, let, let me just I'm just try and get in because like when I bought him, I, and I bought him in because he's always named. He's always, I mean, even this week, this week he's named in the start in 13, but he won't. He won't start. He never does. But he's always named in the start. And so of course you know with great big scores on him and and start and every week. Of course you're going to buy him. So I thought, oh, he's a buy. But he wasn't. <laughs> but I mean, I bought him at 258000 right? And I sold him at 259000 So I even made him. So, you know, let's let's back off the all though, hey? <laughs> hey, look, get, get, I got to say, man, i got to say, I'm right there with you, man. I'm right there with you. I brought in Orbo. In fact, I can tell you when I did it, I went coot. When Coot got injured, I went Coot to Orbison, <laughs> and I bought him, at, and that was round two, 258300 And uh, <laughs> I got lucky, actually. I got rid of him in, in round five, but uh, uh, I managed to, to make a, a fair bit more. I, I sold him for 283500 but still burnt two trades to yeah. bring him well, in. We, yeah, we won't, we won't talk about the two trades it cost to bring him in and, and then yeah. kick him out. But, um, he's... Yeah, he's dead ordinary. He's dead ordinary every single year, and 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 once again, I say I won't be buying him next year. And he'll he'll make. I, it. I reckon uh, in mentors, mate, we can <laughs> we can run a book on on whether or not Gareth Lasky buys Mitchell Orbison next year. Which round? Which round will um, it be? I'm picking round one. I I, I oh. think that could be a good one. But just just to make you feel a bit better, you know, my my Mitchell Orbison of the year was uh, Gavin Cooper. You know, I paid three hundred and eighty thousand nearly for the uh, bloke, and brought him in and right now at he's the on start, the bench, eh? and and now he's on the yeah. bench, and I I. I yeah. Him um, at, at three hundred and forty-eight thousand two hundred. So the money I made on Orbo, mate, I lost on Coop. Yeah, I mean with Orbo too. I mean even now, even with so many bad weeks, he's still one of the highest average centers mm. in the game at the moment. You know, I mean, but yeah, it, it's he's shocking, shocking. Um, and I think Ian Lean probably still has him, and 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 I think he cries cries himself to sleep every every weekend because of him. He, uh, I hope he's awful. Get rid of him, I, Ian. I hope, Ian, he, I drop hope him. he doesn't have Gidley as well. Can you imagine? that poor bloke's weekend if he oh. had Orbison and Gidley. Oh. His heart the only, rate would be through the roof. The, the only thing yeah. that could make it any worse is if he had Orbison, Gidley and Naguama in the same 17 back when <laughs> Naguama was uninjured. I mean, and, and I'm pretty confident he, he doesn't because I've seen comments in the last week from Ian Lean on mentors and I'm pretty sure if he did have those three in the starting 17, he would have necked himself by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you, you, you can sort of tell who's got who when someone starts bagging out on people and, and the people who talk a lot go very, very quiet. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. You can guess who they got. It's a bit of a giveaway. But uh, the last name I had down here, I, I wrote a very scrappy little list. The last name I had down here that I bought in thinking he's going to make me a mince at how tight. You mean Daniel the, 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 No, 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 the Eels bloke. The Eels. Yeah, the that, Eels uh, oh, by Tau Tai. By Tau Tai, yeah. Tau Tai, is it? Yeah, yeah, like, he, he made nothing. He made yeah. nothing. He's here for the bites now. 
Yeah, he just sits in my team now. Eels have got pretty decent eyes, so I'm going to keep him. But like, yeah, he's he's it. And, and yeah. he even showed that in the under 20s. Yeah, yeah. he he yeah. he. Did. And, and, and that was a rep game. He needed the ball. Yeah. Terrible, so, terrible, so terrible. Just a quick mention on that. My under 20s yeah. game. I hope like how Michael like I get to start for the Sharks next week or very yeah. shortly for the Sharks because I want a goddamn chip hooker. I want to get rid of more. <laughs> Hang on, can't you pick up just down at King's Cross, Banksy? Pardon? You can go down to King's Cross for a cheap hooker, mate. No, 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 no. I'll see a mate down there. <laughs> 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 I love it how you walk in. After seven weeks of doing e the show, you e still walk e into my donkey way, comments. Either way, you're screwed, aren't you? Either way, you're <laughs> screwed. I'm not well screwed. Oh, the jokes that we could go on with, I think we, we need to move on. But um, just quickly, and, and here's a hot tip for you, you Gareth, and, and I know my hot tips, particularly when I'm giving you a hot tip, it, it's to be taken with a grain of salt because anything that I can come up with, you've probably already thought of ten times over. You, you, um, talk, you talk me into getting Zillman. Mate, and you held him last week? Didn't you? No, no, no. I didn't have his. Oh, no, he got, oh, he got mental. I got, I got mental. Oh no! Oh, that's his health <laughs> injury. Now, mate, have a look at and, and this guy. This guy did actually perform for New South Wales in the under twenty state of origin. Um, and he's he's hmm. been performing quite respectably for the Eels, and and he's named in the seventeen, named off the bench, but seems to always start. He's he's one of those you know day before game day or on game day changes where he goes into the the starting thirteen, and that's uh, hmm. Kalipi Tanganoa. He's he's looking the goods at the moment. He's um. <laughs> He, really seeming at home. Yeah, and, and um, he yeah he started rock bottom, and it was really between him and, and the Dowboy guy, and I, I chose to back the wrong hall. Yeah, he might have backed the right one at the end. I'm, I'm, I'm with you <laughs> on that one, mate. There's buys, and the wing fullback, yeah. lack of bits there. Yeah. Help. Well, but I mean, Kalipi too. Kalipi's Parramatta Eels as well, so same buys there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, no. Yeah. And he's doing well. I mean, he's already up to, what, 160? Yeah, he, he's doing well. And, 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 you know, yeah, he's doing the job. I mean, it's not anything flash, but for his money. And I mean, there's, break even there's so there's, there's so three. little there's, there's so little really cheap players that are guaranteed a game, you know, like the moment. Like, you know, they're really hard on one, you know, and he was one. Cool. Mm, absolutely. He still is one. No, you're spot on, Jay. I think I think you're on the money. All right. Well, well right. thank you page. very much for Un? Praise from the super coach, mate. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm gonna just beam for the rest of the night. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty chuffed right now. All right. I just want to th uh, extend a heartfelt um, thank you to Gareth and opening himself up for listening to you. I hope that you have oh, enjoyed yourself. No worries, mate. I, you know, I'm, I'm not the most social, and, and I don't like sort of chatting and being sort of in the middle of things. But like, you know, you guys do a great job for mentors, and, and this podcast is, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's helped the evolution of to move you a group more so than the forum sort of thing and, and you know, I think you've done a great job and I, I wouldn't have done it for anyone else I, but because of what it's for you know I'm, I'm happy to help out and I hope I, I wasn't too dull <laughs> oh mate no look you've 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 definitely uh, you've been entertaining that's for sure but it's it's also been really good to get an insight in, into the workings of, of the great Gareth Lavsky and, and also to to hear a bit, a bit about the start of, of how Mentors came about um, as many people know like you know I've, I've only been here since the beginning mm. of 2012 and you know wasn't there for I guess the the birth of mentors, you will. But um, Banksy, with your permission, mate, Gareth, I, I'd certainly love it. I'm pretty confident Banksy would be on board, mate. We'd love you to stick around for uh, our second section if uh, or segment if you can tonight, and we'll uh, we'll have a chat about a few different oh, players. Oh, yeah, that'd, that'd be interesting. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind. Yeah, right. thanks, yeah, mate. That'd, that'd be. I'm pretty wrapped, Banksy. You're pretty cool with that, yeah. I'm fine, concerned so it so will be his group of players. He's put forward to us, so. <laughs> I, didn't want to, I, I was trying to make it look like it wasn't planned, mate, because I mean, he, it's as Banksy said, oh, mate, no, you're come not on, gonna, you've, you've opened it up. You're not going uh, through that list, are you? Oh, we're going to have a look at it <laughs> no, a little bit. No, the other list. The other list. Oh, yeah, yeah. it was a pretty rough list. It was, it was just, yeah, for the buy rounds, but, um, yeah, yeah but we can talk, we can talk about that, yeah, for sure. Excellent. Talk about uh, the other list you gave me in that book. Yeah, now this this just took a turn where I suspect there's a three nugget Happy Meal waiting for somebody at the end of it. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll end segment one here, gentlemen, just just to save our listeners oh. any more McDonald's torment and uh, and and. Can you know, we the... can we just end it on on a, an awkward silence, right? <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that. Thanks. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> just like that, uh, well done. Man, you, you can, did well. You can you can come along any week, any week, Gareth. I reckon that's that's fantastic, mate. Um, no worries. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to stick around. I can rela I can relax a bit now and just poke my head in. Yeah, we'll look. Uh, what what we'll do is we'll take a quick break in recording and and um, go on. I think I think we all need to to grab a few more alcoholic bevies and and get re uh, recharged. Awesome. We shall call it politically correctly for uh, for segment two, mate. Thank you very nice. much, and and I just want to echo yeah, thanks, Nathan's guys. thanks. Thanks, thanks for, for coming. Thanks in. for inviting. 
invite me on, mate. And um, well, look, our pleasure. You know, it's, mentors had spoken, and and they really wanted to to hear from you. And mate, it's it. I got to say, Banksy, well done on the interview too, mate. You had to put up with me clowning around and and in injecting, you know, um, idiotic comments. And you know, it's it's really been a privilege. And and believe it or not, guys, we've we've gone on for an hour in this interview. Um, yeah, and it's, it's really well, just flying by. So hopefully, half, it flies half, by half for an hour of this. half an hour of it's been you wrapping up. Well, you know, mate. Look, I, I take my inspiration <laughs> from the novels you post on Mentors, Gareth. <laughs> right. oh, and we, with I'm that, off. we're, we're going to go and re, refill and refresh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for sticking with us through this interview, and uh, we shall be back.